everyone, welcome back to the Rocks and Change YouTube channel. My name is Claire Hastings and today I'm going to show you how to make the European 4-in-1 chainmail weave. Now this is a very ancient chainmail weave, it was used in medieval times um, to make suits of armour and it's one of the most popular ones that still is used today. So we use it in lots of um, different um, things, we use it for shark suits, we use it for butcher's gloves, chainsaw trousers and for... Um, Chefs use it for actually, um, instead of tinfoil, that kind of thing, on top of when they're cooking um, joints of meat. So it's a very versatile weave. It makes the most beautiful bracelet and, and garments as well because it has this beautiful fluidity to it. It's all, it is just like a metal fabric. I've made this one into a bracelet and you can see that I've got these little endings here with these Mobius rings coming down um, from the weave into the actual clasp itself. I do have these kits available, they're on hochanda.com. Um, if you go to hochanda and go to the brand section and look for rocks and chains, you will see that these kits are available there. They do come in different colorways. If this is the first time you've ever used, um, uh, sorry, made um, European 4-in-1, it is easier if you do use two different colors or even three different colors if you want to. And the kits do come with um, practice jump rings for you to make this little segment here with three different colors so you can see where each color goes. So in this case I've used the black jump rings as the open jump rings and the silver jump rings as the closed jump rings. So it's quite a quick weave to make um, once you get into the swing of it but just take your time and it will be um, lots of fun to make because it, it really is a beautiful beautiful design great for ladies and for gents. And you can see this one's got extra rows on it as well, so it makes that really lovely um, depth of a bracelet. So to make this bracelet, we're going to need two pairs of chain nose or flat nose pliers. Okay, so as long as the jaws on the inside are nice and smooth and flat, then that's fine. So these are my um, flat nose pliers. You can see they've got an actual flat nose at the end. So we call this, this section the, uh, like the nose of the plier. And they're nice and flat on the inside. This section are my chain nose pliers. So again, we've got that flat on the inside, but we've now got a nice rounded top to them. And that just makes it easier to see where each jump ring is going to be placed. So these are my um, pliers of choice, but you can use any pliers that you have at home um, in your stash. So to get going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this weave in my large jump rings. Okay, I find these large jump rings so much easier for you to see than the small jump rings. I'm just going to bring all my open jump rings over and I've got now some closed jump rings. So European 4-in-1 literally means one jump ring holds four in place. Okay, so as long as you remember that little rule of thumb, one jump ring holds four in place, you'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my open jump ring and I'm going to add four closed jump rings in place. Now these jump rings are 3.75 in a diameter made on a 1mm wire, so aspect ratio of 3.75. This weave can be done in lots of different sizes. The endings that I've done on this bracelet, I've used a 5.5 um, for the Mobius to bring it to a single point that you can then attach your clasp to. But for the main body of the bracelet, it's 3.75. I'm going to close that jump ring up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down. I, as you can see from the, from the piece that I've made here, it's a flat weave. Okay, It is easier if you have a nice stable surface to put this on so that you can see where each piece is going. So I've now got my four jump rings laid out so that I've got the black jump rings at the top, the gold jump ring in the middle and the red jump was at the bottom. I'm right handed, so I'm going to chain mail along to the right. This central jump ring here must be pointing the way that it's going. So at the minute, it's down at the bottom and it's up at the top. So it's pointing the way that I'm going. If you're left handed, all you would do is just rearrange this so that it is pointing to the left. You also need to make sure that these first two jump rings are sat on top of the back two jump rings, okay? So if you're left-handed, you would just make sure that this jump ring is pointing to the left. If you're right-handed, 
you just point it to the right. You can obviously turn it vertical as well if you want to chain mail away from your chain mail towards you. But um, while you're just learning this, it's easier if this you remember that this jump ring's pointing the way that you're going. Now, one in this in this initial chain, this this central first chain, we can only ever add in two closed jump rings. Okay, so we said that it was European four in one, so one jump ring holds four in place. We've got our two closed jump rings, so we need two jump rings from the initial piece that we've just popped down. So I'm going to take my open jump ring and I'm going to go down through this red jump ring here. So down through the jump ring that's closest to me. Okay, and I'm going to go up through the jump ring on the top. Okay, so I'm just going to do that again for you. So I'm going to take my open jump ring and I'm going to go down through the red jump ring and up through the black jump ring okay now you can see that naturally now this open jump ring is sitting underneath the previous open jump ring so it's not sitting on top it's just naturally gone underneath so before i close this one up i've only got two jump rings in place so i can now add on the next two jump rings in order now every open jump ring sits underneath the previous open jump ring and every closed jump ring sits on top of the previous closed jump ring i can close this one up now okay now we can see that this central spine is still pointing the way that i'm going and i've now got two loose jump rings here and here that i can then start to attach my next piece in so again i take an open jump ring and I can have two closed jump rings. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit just so you can see a little bit more of the weave. And again, I'm going to take my open jump ring, exactly the same, down through the bottom jump ring, up through the top jump ring. Now when I lift this up, if it fell on the floor and you weren't sure which way it was going, then what you can see now is you can see that that is actually holding in that position. OK, so it's holding where it needs to hold. If it fell on the floor and I didn't realize that the spine was facing the wrong way and I still want to chain mail here. When I go down through the bottom jump ring and up through the top jump ring, you can see that they come together as a pair. So we know that that's the wrong side of the weave. OK. So what we need to do is we're just going to flip our work over, make sure that everything's sitting nice and um, straight. And if you tap chain mail, sometimes it just straightens everything out for you. Again, so we now know that we're going the right way because our central um, spine is facing the way that we're traveling. Down through the bottom jump ring, up through the top jump ring. And before we close, we can add on our two close jump rings and close so i'm now going to just go a little bit faster just to get a little bit more length on here so i've gone down through the bottom jump ring and up through the top jump ring and before i close i'm going to add on two more closed jump rings now if you're comfortable now making this this section what you can do is you can actually add on your jump rings before before you start so in this case i've just popped my jump rings on already and then when i go down through the bottom jump ring and up through the top jump ring and close all i need to do is flip that top jump ring to where it needs to be i'll just do that one more time for you so just taking one of each okay i'm going to go down through the bottom jump ring and up through the top jump ring. So I've got my two from the initial weave and my two that's already there. And when I close, flip that one over, I've now got a nice chain. So you're gonna carry on making that chain to the length of the bracelet that you want, minus the two little bits on the end. Okay, so minus the um, 
the two Mobius rings. So I would probably say take about an inch off of the size that you want. So if you're looking to make a seven and a half inch bracelet, make six and a half inches of this initial weave. Now we want to add another row. So at the minute we've just added, let's just get this to focus. We've added that section. Okay. So we've added just four jump rings. We want to make it a little bit wider by adding another row. So what we need to do is it's exactly the same as what we've done before, but you can only add, apart from the first one, you can only add in one closed jump ring to start at from now on, apart from the very first one in the line. Okay. So this next row is going to emulate what this black row here is going to do. So the first thing I need to do is I need to just pick up two of the bottom row. Okay. So there's my two of the bottom row. So I've gone under the first one and under the second one. Okay. And I'm now going to add on two closed jump rings and close. And now what we have is we have what looks like what we started with. So we have, if we ignore everything else, we've got two jump rings at the bottom, two jump rings at the top, and our central jump ring, which is facing the way that we're going. Now from now on, we can only add in one closed jump ring. So we need to take three from this weave okay so the first one that we always take is the bottom one okay the bottom one that's sitting on the top and we're going to go down through that one we can now see that its opposite pair is here so exactly the same as what we did before so we go down through the bottom and up through the top so using its next pair but now what we need to do is we need to move along the weave so we catch the very next one in place so I'm now going to go underneath and catch the next one. And you can see I just slid that underneath and it's come up through where those two cross over. So I've now got three in place. I take my fourth one and add that down and that's four in place. And you can see now that these two have got a matching pair. The two that I went through before have got a matching pair so I can close that jump ring up. Okay. So again now, I'm going to take my next open, uh, closed jump ring, sorry, that's going to sit here. So I need to make sure that I've got my four that I can add in my open jump ring. So I'll just move that out of the way for a second. So again, I'm going to go down through the bottom jump ring, so which is the, the last jump ring in that line. I'm going to go up through the jump ring opposite it, so it's partner. You can see now that this jump ring is naturally sitting underneath the previous open jump ring. So we know that that's right. I'm now going to take the very next jump ring along. And the way that I do that is I just go underneath and pick that one up. So I've now got three jump rings in place. And before I close, I add on my fourth one and close. I'll just um, finish off this line for you. So again, down through the bottom jump ring, up through the top jump ring, move along to pick up the third jump ring and add on your open, your closed jump ring, sorry, to make your fourth jump ring. And we can see now we've only got a few more to go before we've got to the end of this row. So again, down through the bottom jump ring, up through the top jump ring. I'm just going to zoom in so you can just see this next movement, just in, just so you can see it really close. And I'm going to go underneath. So you, can you see that eye shape here where they cross over? So it's gone into that eye shape. Okay, so it's gone down through the bottom jump ring, up through the top jump ring, and then under and through the next jump ring along. Add in our closed jump ring and close. And now we've got left our last three jump rings. So all we need is one more open jump ring. 
and we're going to go down through the bottom jump ring up through the top jump ring and then along to that final jump ring and then just to finish this off puppy on the last jump ring and close so if you do that all the way along your bracelet you will now have an extra two rows onto your bracelet okay so just remember that the very first jump ring that you add on sub subsequent rows from the initial row you add two closed jump rings to start with and that starts your four in one off and then from then on we add one as we go along now to attach your um clasp we need to just take off the central jump ring so i'm just going to zoom back in again so you can see exactly what i'm doing so this is exactly the same as what we've done but this is in the correct size jump rings what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this red jump ring from either end of my weave and this will help bring this then to a point so i'm just going to pick this up and using my pliers I'm just going to take out that central jump ring and don't worry nothing will fall apart by taking that jump ring out but by taking that jump ring out we can see now that it's actually given us two loose jump rings at the end if I just lay it back down you can see it easier so we can see now we've got two loose jump rings let's see if we can get that to focus there we go and we can now take our 5.5 millimeter jump ring and we can just scoop up those two and you can see now how we're bringing it to a point close that jump ring up don't get rid of the central jump ring that you've just that you've just taken out because we're going to use that to add our clasp and again we're going to now mobius this so we're going to go through the same two jump rings and before we close, we're going to duck that underneath so it's crossing it over. Now, by crossing it over, we're creating, like I say, our Mobius ring, but it's also creating strength as well. And I'm going to take my last jump ring. And again, through both of those small end jump rings, and then before I close, I'm going to duck it underneath both of those. So we can see now it's crossed over both of the large jump rings and close. And we now have our lovely Mobius ring on the end. We can then take that central jump ring that we took out. We can add it back in onto the Mobius ring. And then before we close on one end, we can attach our clasp and on the other end we just attach our single our single jump ring and there we go and we've got then our beautiful end to our european four-in-one bracelet i hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial on how to make a european four-in-one with it with additional rows if you have any queries or questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at www.roxandchains.com. Go to the contact form, fill that in, ask me any questions or alternatively find me on um, social media at Rocks and Chains and I'm happy to help any way I can. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.